My name is Jai Bhatt. I am the Engineering Librarian, Scholarly Connections Department in Texas University Libraries. And today's topic is all about Web of Science and how we can use and integrate Web of Science and Insights to think about and learn about scholarly productivity from a variety of perspectives. Right. So this uh, webinar will introduce two powerful tools, Web of Science and Insights, to analyze scholarly productivity and benchmark output against peers in national or international con context. And before I go further into de de details, I just want to uh, highlight that there are going to be um, many slides. Um, so you might see that it's a long presentation, but they are in sequence, so it will really help you to uh, uh, get to know what are different ways you can explore different functionalities of insights. Um, so let's get started. We're going to start with Web of Science Core Collection. Uh, uh, it's a platform consisting of several literature search databases to support scientific and scholarly research. And it also has citation indexes representing the citation connections between the scholarly research articles found in journals, books, and proceedings. And in today's example, I'm going to be using uh, very interdisciplinary research examples so that um, it will be very useful from faculty, students, and researchers in any discipline uh, they want to use Web of Science and Insights uh, as an example in, in this particular example. So, um, Web of Science is basically used in citation tracking, citation counts, author H index, and many other things. And many of you probably know that it also has access uh, linked to essential essential science indicators that will have uh, will provide hot and highly cited articles. And Web of Science um, also have access to general of Im general impact factors through general citation reports. And we're going to cover that in uh, brief as well. So, how do I access uh, Web of Science? So we can go, uh, start with our library homepage at library.drexel.edu and you can see databases A to Z list here and click on A to Z list and you can see web of uh, science from there. So that's in alphabetical order. And I also want to highlight that you can also create an account and I have already logged in here, but you will see um, a link where you can say you can set up your account and uh, especially if you're going to use insights, uh, you will have to use that uh, your account number and account name, password, etc. So because Web of Science and Insights are integrated, so you will be able to download citations from Web of Science into Insights for your uh, data evaluations and a mm, lot of different productivity information that you want to see. But I'm going to start with Web of Science and now they have document search and they also have researchers information. We're going to start with documents. And uh, if you want to know how many times a particular paper is cited, you can go to cited references and you can change under topic to whether uh, the author name and so on. I'm going to share, have a couple of examples in the next few slides. But if you look into, into Web of Science under editions all, you can see there are many other different things available. So science citation index, social science citation index, arts and humanities citation index. And that's why it is so interdisciplinary in nature. So faculty members or researchers in any department can be able to use Web of Science and Insights for their uh, uh, analysis of scholarly productivity. Um, so uh, to make it more interactive and engaging, I'm, I'm going to make it I, uh, use two examples and we'll try to answer specific questions like, how do I find out how many times a specific research paper was cited? And then we'll try to explore what a citation report is and how it can be used to learn more about productivity tools. So we'll use these two examples. And before we do that, we want to learn more about what exactly is a cited reference? And I have seen that many times a graduate student comes and it, or she comes to my office and tells me that my advisor wants me to find out how many times this particular paper was cited, um, or they, they might come up with their own paper of faculty member and they want to know how many my, times my faculty member's uh, paper was cited in the past. And this is a, a, a common question that comes quite often. 
So we'll use uh, as this uh, 2010 paper, which is the title I have on the, uh, Tourism Travel Under Climate Change uh, Mitigation Constraints uh, by Paul Peters. Uh, that paper was published in 2010. And we want to know how many times this paper was cited. And interestingly, you will also see, even there's an old paper um, from previous years, uh, uh, researchers have cited with this, their paper in even in 2023 in most recent papers. So it, it shows the impact of that research even after 20, 30, 40 years. So um, uh, uh, make sure that you ex actually see uh, the exact volume number, issue number, page numbers. This is an important information uh, because many times what happens is that when you submit your paper and citation, if you made a mistake, that mistake is then uh, compounded in the web of science. And you'll see an example of that as well. So it's because we know the title of the paper, under cited references, I'm using cited title and then copy and pasting the title and then uh, finding how many times that paper was cited. Now, as I was referring to you, the same paper here, the same title here, and you can even see how the um, uh, there are mis mistakes in spelling or even with the authors here. Um, and even uh, the year uh, is different. Sometimes volume numbers are different uh, and the citing articles are different. So which is the right one? And and you can see that the last paper, the last citation even has a document object identifier, which is very important. And that's why I recommend all our faculty students to think about getting a document uh, object identifier for the paper, as well as the ORCID ID that we'll come back to it later for unique um, author disintegration. So uh, cited DOI, which is a document object identifier for each article is a unique number that identifies that paper. And because I already know this, I just simply copy and paste and then click on search. And it tells me you know, that this paper had two, when I uh, use this, uh, it has 212 citations. That was sometime in end of March, uh, or uh, uh, so about a month ago, I did this. So uh, it can have, will have a, some additional citations now. And these are all the 2012 citations. Notice that this paper uh, was published in April 2023. So very recent paper. And it also had 181 references. And he it, this paper already got two citations. But, but the one um, uh, so even it was published in April 2023, that paper got two citations. Mm, whereas this paper in 2010 got a cite citation in a 2023 paper. Uh, so uh, uh, this is how the cited reference works. Um, I want to go further to expand into citation report and what citation report does and why it is important and how do I find information about total number of citations, H index, and so on. Uh, and how do I do that, right? So let's take an example of a very interdisciplinary research uh, topic, which I'm referring to as uh, regenerative medicine, stem cells, and wound healing. This is a high research area. Um, even we have now uh, gene and stem cells and cell, uh, uh, cells and gene therapy, all those are important topics. And we can use that as an example. And coverage is from 1980 to present. So you can see publication date. And uh, I uh, I want to now research that topic. Uh, so when I uh, do that, uh, I when I did this research, I had eight 1,816 research papers um, in that topic. Um, uh, so um, I want to um, see the highly cited paper on the top. So I can select uh, um, citation highest first. And when I do that, now all my citations are so sorted by highest number of citations for the paper on the top. So this particular paper, Foreign Body Reaction to Biomaterials, published 
in 2008 in seminars in immunology had uh, 3165 citations and 157 uh, references that is the highest uh, number of citations in that paper in that group of uh, research topics but there are also citation topics here you can also quickly filter uh, but the one thing i wanted to explore is citation report and Uh, since i am here i also point out that there is a create alert option so if you create your account every time a newspaper is uh, published or somebody is citing someone and if you set up that is an alert you will get an alert for that so i am clicking on citation uh, report and that tells me uh, that i had about 1860 1816 papers from 1980 to 2023 and all those publications had 47085 citing articles and uh, the, now they also provide without self citations so you will see that number as well and every citation is 35.29 for each paper and 64085 times those papers are cited and um I, this is just a one small screenshot of this and you can see how those paper were increased in the recent years uh, so you can see that that data from 2017 onwards had a tremendous increase in number of uh, publications on the topic and h and is 115 I mean we'll come back to it later but h index means that it has 115 papers from this uh, number of public papers which have been cited 115 times of or more so i can um, i can also see article level citations uh, for each year uh, so you can see here that my top paper again i am citing i sorting by highest number of citations on the top um Uh, it has total number of 64000 or um, uh, in this search but this particular paper has 3165 citations and it you can tell you can see each year how many times this paper was cited uh and so far in 2023 already 45 times this paper was cited and you can si simply click on this arrow to get previous years uh here so what is h index um it is based on the list of publications ranked in descending order by the time cited count h means that the h papers have been cited at least h times so here is this particular example i went to this uh, uh listing went to 115 paper and you can see that this paper was cited 115 times and above all these papers are cited uh, more than 115 times so that is the h index for this paper now uh, we we'll, uh, come back to insights this is the core of this but web of science also helps you to create some understanding of citations and impact and all that but we want to go beyond that and we want to learn about what insights and how it, insights can help us as a research evaluation tool um so uh, it allows you to assess research performance at all levels of your organization benchmark yourself to peers regionally and globally and find and analyze collaborations and partnerships and dissect the funding landscape to find more opportunities and this is a great way to look at uh, if you compare uh, your uh, faculty members publications and where they are getting the most funded and which paper was cited the most in terms of uh, uh, which particular funding all that data you can generate and we will come back to it uh, explore all of this So insights is basically a citation based evaluation tool for academic and government administrators for analyzing institutional uh, productivity peer uh, reference and so on peer uh, uh, the peers productivity in comparison so um, if you look at research as organizations you can be able to identify and manage research activities their impact you can compare performances among peers internal external partnerships collaborations you can be able to see um 
your universities, your research departments are where well, they are collaborating in nationally and internationally, and how much that collaboration has resulted in high impact journals. You can also able to see that. And we will also uh, look at uh, what are the top emerging areas. Uh, uh, remember the uh, re recent example of uh, we saw about stem cells, regenerative medicines. We noticed that from 19, 2017 onwards, all of a sudden we have seen the jump in the number of papers published. So a lot more emphasis on such topics. Um, uh, impact of funding policy, trends, key indicators. We will also learn about what are different key indi indicators that insights provide and using those indicators, how can we measure performances? So again, I just want to explore three questions. I, I also point, want to uh, uh, make sure that you know that there are so many different things you can do with insights. So this is just the tip of the iceberg that I'm showing here. So you will need to understand and hands-on experience. And I am always there to assist. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Email me, call me, uh, and we'll set up a Zoom meeting as well. But I have also included a number of tutorial links uh, uh, and how to access them later on. And we'll explore uh, how, uh, how do I import citations from Web of Science. So we'll do a custom search in Web of Science. And then we will try to use those, import these citations from Web of Science into Insights. And we'll use that as an example uh, to think about a list of research areas sorted by time cited what areas have the highest number of papers that are cited. We'll pick up one research area and we'll see highest number of citations in that area, which organizations have funded in specific research area, and so on. Um, so we'll try to explore that. And um, I have explained to you how to access insights in a couple of earlier sites by databases by title page and from the library homepage, and then you click on insights or you click on Web of Science, you, uh, in either way you can be able to ac access insights. You will need to log on. You have to create an account first, for sure, uh, because insights, it doesn't work without creating your account. So you can also see there is a link to Web of Science, insights, general citation reports, and so on. And these are uh, various entities uh, using which you can uh, continue uh, and analyze your research. We'll come back to couple of examples of this, uh, each one of these categories that we will explore uh, and analysis and reports. Uh, so first uh, goal is to create a custom data set in Web of Science. Uh, and how do we do that? Uh, so we go back to Web of Science. Remember, we did a search on regenerative medicine stem cells and wound healing as example. And this was the set of the results in Web of Science. Now you can select um, from here that I want to use insights. Um, so uh, select insights. So I want to move those citations into my insights platform. Uh, so to create an insights data set, you must sign into insights, right? So you create an account, log in, sign in, and then um, you can as you use the option save to insights. And I have created a name for this data set called Regenerative Medicine 2023. Uh, so this many number of uh, citations. So I did this on the second uh, couple of days later. So already there were three more citations to my search. Initially I had 18, 16, but when I did two in, uh, in insights, at the time I got eight in 19 citations. And then you can click on export. Oh, and when you do that, uh, you will uh, see and uh, you will receive an email notification with your request data set was successive to insights and so on. Uh, this is the name and it will also tell you that how many of those records were not included in the set as a data set. It will tell you the signs, why they were not included. If they were published before 1980, they won't be there. Or uh, uh, recently added Web of Science collection because Insights dataset is only updated every month, whereas the Web of Science is constantly updated every day. So you will have to, you may miss some of those citations uh, at that time. So now um, 
and you can also access insights from the products menu here uh, on the top right and insights benchmarking analytics this is on the web of science but if you click on products you will see insights and you can select that and uh, these are different ways you can access different entities within analyze within report within organize um, and so on so insight um, we are uh, going to use explore insight data sets using data exported from web of science and into insights this is our folder so what we can do uh, is when you go to insights when you log in uh, you can select there is an organize option underneath you will see a folders option and when i click on folders my custom data set with the name regenerative medicine 2023 should be there we'll come back to each one of this very soon so under folders under I mean, organize folders and you will see my regenerative medicine 2023 which i created on 24th march of 2023 so now uh, we will explore uh, um, uh, different entities and how uh, we'll use analyze features within insights and learn about what different researchers are there, their different organizations, regions, research areas, journals. These are different entities you can explore by. But for the purpose of today's uh, presentation, we are going to use researcher and research areas as two entities in our folder. And we can you know, use different filters to think about top performing researchers, peer sets to benchmark, evaluate data, and performance indicators as well. So uh, here is uh, my, uh, uh, the, uh, I'm using insights um, under analyze option. I'm selecting researchers. Um, and under, uh, you will see, I, this is from 1980 to 2003. These are different uh menu items that you can also select affiliated organization person name or id collaboration and so on so in that particular group i found that 9289 uh, researchers and total number of times uh, uh document and database a uh, data set we are using is regenerative medicine but there is another data set, full insights data sets, which we'll come back to it later. So I'm sorting by time cited. Uh, so, um, so you will see that this is uh, 3,378 times uh, uh, this particular researcher has his articles have been uh, cited so far. And he's from Stanford University. So top two are from Stanford and the third case Western University. Um, I'm not going to go into the uh, web of science author record, but uh, the, the, it's a new feature that recently added. So when you do web of science author research, um, uh, it will really help you uh, identify the right author. So it will minimize the risk of missed name variant uh, and that is why it is very important for the faculty and students to create orchid id because that way you are sure that uh, it is your own paper but because there are so many common names sometimes uh, you get confused but that orchid id is attached to the right author meaning that only the right papers from that author that you are interested are uh, you are finding it and uh, and there's a lot of information under help page that you may want to explore and you're all going to get this presentation i'm also going to have my presentation and video recording sent to you and uh, from that presentation you can be able to click on this link to get more details so uh, now i'm uh, using research areas uh, and i'm still using our regenerative medicine data set and under analyze I'm uh, now going to uh, sort by different research areas. So you have cell biology, cell tissue engineering, engineering, biomedical, medical, medicine research, material science, biomedical. So you can see how interdisciplinary this research area is. is. And again, I'm sorting by time cited. Uh, so cell biology has uh, 491 documents in this particular search uh, query 
which has 17,000 papers uh, the uh, times uh, the uh, times that these 491 papers are cited almost 17,000 times. And um, this is the insights help. I strongly encourage you to go uh, this link. And even in uh, insights, you will see help where it will take you to this page. And always use what is new option. So that will help you uh, to see what new things have been added. Uh, and you can explore or you want to learn more about what is analyzed, what is report, what are the organized, all this you can be able to uh, explore. All the training videos for insights are available from here and the indicators handbook are here. So many, many videos there. So you might want to explore those. Um, and we'll talk about performance indicators uh, listed within insights uh, data sets. So there are 40 selected advanced quantitative performance. There are different uh, indicator examples like web of science documents. You want to see uh, time cited document and how many percentage of documents are within top 1%. That kind of data you can now you, you find out using insight data sets, highly cited papers, hot papers, and so on. So how do we do that? Uh, I went to that help link that I showed you. And in that, I type performance indicators. And when I do that, I get access to indicators handbook. Uh, indicators glossary definition for each uh, performance indicator. So you want to understand what this indicator uh, is doing and how it can help you with you generating your own data. So I'm just included a couple of examples here. What does that mean? Percent documents in top one percent web of science documents are total number of web of science documents when you see that and it is a, a explanation time cited and HNX and so on. And if you go again to the help page and under you will under indicators handbook, you will see indicators and calculations and within that you will see impact indicators and within that you will uh, will see a, an example of citation impact and how it is computed. For example, here uh, they are saying researcher A has one publication which has 50 citations and this ratio provides a citation impact, uh, total citations divided by total publications. So this researcher A's citation impact is 50, where researcher B has 10 publications, has 200 citations, but his citation impact is only 20. Uh, so even though this person has 10 publications, uh, uh, you're looking at total number of citations and the citation impact goes down. Uh, that usually happens as more and more publications you publish. So we will now exploring analyze research option uh, under researchers and research areas. We are exploring two of them under analyze option. So um, we are looking at researchers. Uh, we are looking at last five years sorted by time cited. So you can see time period I'm selecting 2018 to 2022. And these are total number of uh, all the researchers and they're sorted by time cited. These are all performance indicators here. Uh, and we'll, uh, um, if you want to add any other different uh, indicator, you have to click on add indicator and explore and you can add um, any other indicators that you want. Um, adding indicators again that is what i'm trying to explain here but this time i'm using research areas so biochemistry molecular biology material science and all those areas so biochemistry molecular biology has highest number of time papers cited then comes material science and chemistry and chemistry and so on uh, and here is where i want to add indicators when i click on add indicator now i'm adding few more indicators in 1%. So documents in top 1%, highly set, cited papers, citation impact, and I add um, this and click on apply. And that will, uh, all three uh, new performance in indicators that I've added are now shows up here. Documents in top 1%, highly cited papers, citation impact, there's all different impact uh, factors. Uh, uh, um, indicators I have added. Uh, I am only under analyze option, under researcher, 
and last five years. But there are many other different things you can use. Collaboration with people, you can explore on their own. Now, remember, I'm now using Insights datasets, which is the complete dataset. Not, I'm moving away from our regenerative medicine into a whole database where I can explore my own university uh, for a complete set of articles. So this is a complete setup base, and you can see that I'm in Insights datasets here, selecting Insights, and I want to explore everything uh, we have close to 255 research areas at Drexel um, and all different disciplines and which areas at Drexel has highest number of papers cited, uh, percentage documents cited, uh, and so on. So you can see that uh, physics has less number of web of science documents and has less number of uh, papers time cited, but they still have almost 80% of documents have been cited there. So this kind of data you can uh, use, uh, find in Insights data set. Um, I can remember I'm sorting by time cited here. I can also see visual. Uh, right now, I initially I was using table, but now I, I want visual. So all these eight different disciplines I'm using because I'm using show top eight citations. If I want 15 areas, then I can change it to 15. Uh, and uh, 15 uh, areas will be displayed, but I'm selecting only eight top areas. So eight top areas by time cited. So biochemistry, molecular biology, material science, uh, chemistry, uh, multidisciplinary, physical chemistry, neurosciences, cell biologies. These are the top areas that have been uh, uh, cited. Okay, I'm in inside data sets. Um, and now I'm going back to table and these are all different research areas and you can see all they are cited in number of times, 104, 64, 50. This is uh, that number in uh, uh, the highest number on the top and how many percentage documents have been cited. And I can also use article level metrics uh, so within a particular research area. So I want to explore biochemistry and molecular biology. So when I click on that, uh, it has um, uh, web of science and documents. Uh, this is the highest number. But if I click on that area, uh, you will see all the papers published within biochemistry molecular biology area. Mm, and uh, sorting by time cited, and when you click on refocus to view publication sources this entity has published in, you will see all the journals published within that area, uh, within um, molecular biology research area that we are selecting. So you can see Journal of Biological Chemistry, Cell Biology, Cell, Nature, Nucleic Acid Research, Science, Biochemistry. They are the top journals where our faculty members have published. Um, now, if I want to cite, uh, use astronomy, astrophysics research area, analyzing by funding agencies, article from funding agencies sorted by time cited, what I'm doing is I want to select the astronomy and astrophysics area. I want to know what funding agencies um, the grant uh, the astronomy department, astronomy, astrophysics got. And then I want to sort by time cited. So that way I know, okay, we got, they got funding from this uh, funding agency and their funding agencies papers that they publish using that grant are uh, highly cited papers. And we can use that. And how do we do that? Again, I'm in analyze option. I'm using funded option. I'm using funding agencies option here. And it, uh, when you start exploring on your own, you will see that. Uh, and I'm giving example, how do I do that? You can go back to filters. I want organization name. I only want Drexel University. So you can also select Drexel University in the earlier inside database sets. So you can find uh, what we did uh, for incomplete inside uh, data set, but that, 
was in different universities this is coming up but if i want to focus only on drexel you can select drexel as a filter here and you can then select research area under astronomy astrophysics and then um, select the funding research area and now i am uh, uh, funding agencies so these are all the funding agencies that you see and then they are time cited uh, here so national science foundation uh funded Mm, uh, wave of science documents are 77 and they have been cited 3196 times uh, so you can see uh, but you can also explore different other funding agencies that um, the astronomy department uh, got funding from so engineering can uh, use the same way to find out um, tell uh, research areas and how many times those which funding they got received from and so on we can also get other types of uh, uh, information using insights i want to know where our drexel researchers are publishing what journals are they citing and what journals are citing us all that kind of information we can get which who is drexel collaborating with most frequently and are those relationship producing quality research so we can get all that kind of data and we can use research report to provide that data analytics specific to individual researchers and you can find research report for a particular researcher at drexel or any other university by typing that person's orchid id find person option so it's, so that's why again i'm emphasizing Orchid ID is absolutely critically important, and we want our faculty researchers, uh, even graduate students, to get their Orchid IDs. So now uh, I'm going back to insights here, but I'm exploring research report. Under report, I'm using a researchers report, and at that time, I'm getting an option for Orchid ID to type. So I mm, mm, I use this particular Orchid ID number. Uh, I have also so you can also copy and paste just if you want to explore on your own and see what kind of information I can find. So you can see research output collaboration, most cited documents for that particular researchers. So if you want to know uh, these researchers, what are their collaborations you can find? What is the research output you can find? again this is an insights data set and when i did it was from 1980 to 2019 and this particular researcher i am now getting the data research output it has this person has an h index of 191 so he's out of all the papers that has published for 1457 that are web of science documents of those 191 papers has 191 and more citations and percentage documents in top 10 percent 41 percent of those documents are in top 10 percent just imagine amazing uh, number of uh, publications and amazing productivity for this and uh, all those papers have been cited 189 thousand times and more and uh, i can also see different categories so it is material science multidisciplinary chemistry uh, nano science and nanotechnology physics all different subject areas within which uh, 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 this person has published papers they are all very interdisciplinary uh, but material science in multidisciplinary has the highest number of papers and again this is i mean um, making it bigger so you can see it better material science and multidisciplinary 728 web of science documents with the highest then you have chemistry 373 uh, multidisciplinary nano science and so on and again i'm displaying that here top four areas on the top uh total number of web of science documents you can always add indicator to get 
any additional data that you want uh, and then explore. You can also use collaboration with people, web of science documents, all different other indicators to look into. And I can also explore that research category, material science, multidisciplinary. And I'm also sorting by highest paper number of citations. Mm -hmm. So these paper, materials for electrochemical capacitors, Yuri Gogotsi, Dr. Yuri Gogotsi and Patrice Simon, their paper in Nature Materials, published in 2008, was cited 12,831 uh, times so far uh, when i list uh, when i did this uh, screenshot last last time and you can actually see uh, other papers here uh, nano two dimensional nano crystals again um, michael Nagy, these are all also uh, drexel researchers when when they published this paper here and advanced materials, uh, natural materials, you can actually explore in that way uh, different journals in which our researchers have published. And a very a neat thing that you can also explore here is researcher report citation topic word cloud. So what are different thought keywords? You will have diamond and you have supercapacitors and sonic liquids and ceramic matrix composites and carbon nanotubes. You can see how various key research areas are uh, this particular paper, uh, uh, this set of citation uh, author researchers has published in um, different keywords that they used. Um, and finally, I want to explore uh, using organization report, uh, how can we find information about fundings and things like that? Or I can select under report, you can select organization report. And uh, I use Drexel University as an organization. And I want to see uh, universities collaboration with diff diff different institutions. I can also see international collaboration. Um, and you can see here uh, collaborations by country and research area. Uh, so you can see underneath, you will see USA, China, Canada, UK, England, Germany, and so on. So the different countries with which our Drexel faculty members have collaborated and um, with number of publications and so on. And your know, top collaborating in institute organizations who are the most frequent collaborations organizations for Drexel. So University of Pennsylvania. And then we have Pennsylvania Commonwealth System and University of California System and so on. And you can actually uh, view data. If you click on view data here, you'll get more data on this. So Drexel's collaboration, University of Pennsylvania, Penn State, Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania and so on. Johns Hopkins, Temple, Harvard, Jefferson, and so on. And you you need to explore more and more such things so that you can find international collaborators as well. And this is a chart. Uh, the same thing, top 11 co collaborators, Web of Science documents, and uh, here, uh, Drexel's collaboration. If you want to see uh, Drexel's collaboration with Johns Hopkins here, then you will see his number six, but, and that many, uh, papers or uh, Drexel's collaboration uh, with Johns Hopkins has resulted in. And you can then look at who are the researchers with that, who collaborated with whom, uh, citation data, impact factor, um, and so on. Also, you can explore. And all my tutorials are also included on this website, and these are fairly updated. So you can explore Web of Science, library guides, their tutorials, insights, help, general citation reports, essential science indicators, benchmarking, and so on. And thank you so much. I'm going to stop here. And you can ask any questions. And there is a chat questions here. So I I, th I think I understand uh, through insights. Uh, what I'm looking to do is, is build a list of the top, um, the, the, the top, 
public the top sources within a, a certain number, a, a, you know, any given uh, subject area, and then send an alert for any time one of our researchers publishes in that publication. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I mean, I don't need. I don't want to wait until they've uh, been cited. That paper has been cited next number of times. But as soon as the um, it gets published, this is fantastic. Yeah, this is a great tool. So if you set up an alert for uh, say, if you want to see ten authors or ten researchers, whoever you want to do, you can set up an alert for that person. Perfect. Yeah. Or even for the topic. Or suppose. Um, uh, say smart kidneys, for example, is a topic of interest to you. And if you want to know, uh, are there any papers published on that topic, either by Drexel faculty or anywhere in the world, you can do that too. Great, great. Yeah, that, that's going to be very, very helpful because we're uh, always trying to find when our faculty pu publish something in a meaningful journal. And, and the, absolutely. The, what, what a meaningful <laughs> journal is, you know, is it, different to different people, but if we can use uh, H index and everything to to determine that, that would be very helpful. So yeah, uh, only thing, that, Jeff, yeah. I want to also point out that there is so much in insights that you need to start exploring using my presentation or different tools and different tutorials, and see what are the top things that you want to explore. You can talk with the dean and see what her needs are or your other faculty members and how you want to compile the data. You can all do that yeah. very easily. But yeah, thank you, you, thank you. I'm glad this is being recorded so I can go back and sort of recreate Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, uh, so that is very important because uh, unless you go dig in yourself and start exploring, uh, it will be uh, difficult for you and explore the full potential that insights and website together gives you. All right, well, if there aren't any other questions, I believe this will conclude our session today. Thank you so much for everybody who attended today and thank you for all our future virtual attendees as well. Uh, have a great afternoon.